Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant for the month of June. I hope you're using the Crow Tarot for you today. I hope it is. Uh, so before we go any further, let's address the fact that Mercury is in retrograde from the 30th, 29th, 30th of May to the 22nd of June. Um, <clears throat> It is a time that is commonly associated with uh, well, issues, right? So communication issues, particularly heightened, given that this is in Gemini this year. So um, you could find it difficult to articulate what it is that you actually mean um, when you're trying to express yourself. And you should be aware that people could take it the wrong way. Equally, people may have difficulty expressing and articulating exactly what they mean to. And so you could find yourself either talking at cross purposes with people, or you could find yourself uh, or other people taking offense at what is being said when that wasn't really what was meant. It, it's a time to be quite compassionate in your dealings with people and not to place too much emphasis <clears throat> on what is actually said this month because the chances are people are going to cock it up and you're going to cock it up and it's just you know it is what it is so uh there is that there's also the possibility of um you know travel delays that's quite common technological mishaps uh, just just technology not working or you know breaking in really dramatic and unnecessary fashion you know that's a big one too um I think that's about it. I mean, the, the energy of the retrograde is to really to encourage you to be reflective, to make sure that you're tying up loose ends, you know, to help you understand what it is that you think <clears throat> and find a way of expressing that, you know, properly. It is sometimes a time where you see people from the past popping back up or an old situation resurfacing. It is purely so that you can close that out properly. Remember people that reappear in a retrograde really don't tend to stay very often so it's a good time for finishing off things that you've started it's not such a good time for um, starting something new and in terms of contracts and things like that if you can avoid signing them during this time and remember that there is a two-week period either side of the uh, retrograde starting then that would be great if not then just ensure that you're double checking and tri triple checking exactly what it is that you're committing yourself to because uh, this energy is very much detail oriented you yeah. know so <clears throat> what else hmm. there'll be an extended at the end of this reading so if it resonates do feel free to go and check that out the link will be at the top of the description box so <clears throat> Let's have three cards for Sagittarius, please. Oh, there's the first one. It's the Fool, and that was really quite sprightly as it jumped out there. That's in your recent past, card of Aries. What about uh, current energy? We've got the Sun there. That's the card of Leo in your... In your current energy we also have the chariot which is interestingly flipped there that's the card of cancer but it's it's a card that speaks of complete determination and and as soon as it flipped i felt the level of determination going on here there's something that you're really intent on at the moment very focused on could be a leo could be a cancer could be neither might be nothing to do with a person specifically more a situation what's coming towards Sag oh, ten of pentacles what's coming towards Sag and June is the ten of pentacles we have the ten of swords at the bottom of the deck which is interesting because what we've got here is endings and uh, you know completions with new starts too interestingly enough we've got that Leo energy underneath there and the tower like if you are dealing with a Leo, it could be that a Leo is really dealing with some stuff at the moment, right? <clears throat> if not, then this King of Wands might well be you. And it could be that there are things 
Mm. That there's course correction going on with you that is part and parcel of what is being left behind and the new things that are being embraced, you know. Which we'll get some more information about that as the uh, clarifiers come out. <coughs> there's a tower at the bottom of there as well. So, just put a bit more in that. I always forget to keep, keep it going. Right, tell me about the full one, please, for Sash. Thank you. We have the Three of Swords, and we have the Ace of Cups. That is beautiful. I love that. Tell me about the Sun, please. We have the Page of Swords, Ooh, and the Empress. Mm. Tell me about the Ten of Pentacles, please. Thank you. Ooh, we have the Ten of Cups, and we have the Magician. That's really interesting, because there is something of Sag energy that always that I'm always reminded of when I see the Magician. Now, it's not a Sagittarian card. It's actually a card of Gemini, for me. Other readers see it as a Virgo. But there's something about the application of willpower that a Sagittarian is, is capable of bringing to the table. High vibe Sagittarians, specifically, that, that has a magician quality to it. Now, we've got the Judgment card at the bottom of the deck here, followed by the Three of Pentacles and Death, which is a very interesting array of cards, not least because in the meditation that I did before I started this reading, what I did have was kind of floating skulls, and I was trying to... They were just kind of floating around and so obviously the death card was in mind straight away and there are you know the implications of transformation possibly endings <clears throat> for sure but very transformative but what i couldn't work out was whether this was because the ghosts of the past were starting were going to in the month of june really start you know kind of floating around you again which would be very common for retrograde energy and certainly with the judgment card there that would give some credibility to that interpretation or whether it was that there was something quite transformative for you in the month of June now as it happens I think that possibly both of those interpretations are correct to a lesser or greater degree for most of you almost like you don't quite get one without the other now <coughs> as far as ghosts from the past resurfacing, I don't think you're all about to have your exes, you know, hammering on your door or anything like that. But with the newness that we have going on here and, and the really quite amazing cards that we've got lying out for you here, because they are such, this is absolutely stunning. Um, but also necessarily with the Ten of Swords, with the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups that are all on the table here, even the Judgment card, which is double ten, right? it's number 20, there's something of an understanding of where you are in terms of how you can set it against where you have been, right? And we'll get into that a little bit later. But <clears throat> this Three of Pentacles here, it does perhaps indicate a transformation in the way that you work alongside someone, right? The, the Three of Pentacles is cooperation, it's collaboration, it's teamwork, but most specifically it's about building something. And there could be a transformation in the way that somebody is building with you, allowing you to build with them. Or, <clears throat> with this judgment card here to its right as it is, Choosing not to make the not to make the same mistakes. I'm going to go with mistakes, although I'm not sure that that's exactly the word that I'm after. Of the past, in terms of how you present in the act of working together with someone, you know, perhaps it is that you've had issues of codependence in the past, and now in the present, you're like, I don't want to fuck up what I've got here, so I'm going to learn learn the lessons, like those those difficult lessons that I learned in the past. I'm going to bring them. To bear moving forwards and uh, <coughs> adapt and change the way that I, I try and show up for the people that I love, right? So it might be for some of you that that actually involves showing up, right? That's a possibility. For others of you, it's like 
perhaps understanding that it isn't falling to you to fix things all the time. Sometimes it's not actually necessary for you to fix things, merely just to be there and do your part. You know, we could see this going out in a, in a number of different ways. And for each of you, it's going to be slightly different. But it's staggering. Three tens, big endings but also Ace of Cups and the Fool, new beginnings. We've got the Empress also talks of new beginnings to mean the Magician, new beginnings. Page of Sword, a new way of thinking about things too, right? This feels like it's the month where there's a big, big shift and it's it's been a while coming for you. We've got loose ends tying up, new things starting and not much of a gap in between. So... the traffic appears to have gone away briefly so I'll leave the window open for a bit. What we have in your recent past is the Fool now. Like I said it's the card of Aries but it is the very first card of the Major Arcana. In fact the Major Arcana is known as the Fool's Journey right because it goes from the Fool initially numbered zero not one so encapsulating all potential that's what we've got here. And then the fool wends his way through the, the major arcana on his journey until ultimately reaching the world card, right? The, the, the card that symbolizes total completion of a cycle of your life, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a joyous card because from there you go to the full, but you start on the next level up. You know, it's completing a stage and then starting on the next one. And this feels very much like what's happened for you. I'm not sure how much of it, given the cards that are underneath, is reflected in your material environment at this point. It does feel like it's something that's shifted within you, Sagittarius. It could be that everything's exactly the same as it has been for months. But there's somewhat of a rebirth that has occurred for you. And for some of you, it feels almost like a second chance at life. Like, a, you know, there have been shitty things that have happened, but I, don't, I think on the whole, the Sagittarian experience of being, of being, actually, that's a really good just way of putting it, you know, being in the moment, but actually just being, has meant that you've refused to allow yourself to get too dragged down with mundane things too often right and we've spoken before about how that has actually often involved you putting your head down kicking your emotions under the bed or whatever you know and then just zooming zooming along on your path whatever it is but it feels like this is a point of stasis for you almost <sighs> where the need to zoom is a little less than it ever has been before. We have you sitting in the potential of, of everything that, that you want your life to contain moving forwards. But it's come, it's come with reflection. It's come with uh, a shift in your values. Perhaps for some of you, um, a redirection onto a more spiritual path than you felt like you were on before. That's quite strong here with the full, with this one particularly, because we have all of these lotus blossoms here at the bottom. It sounds like something's opened up, like a new layer of life has been revealed to you in some way. <clears throat> and necessarily within that has come an acceptance that you have been wounded and acceptance that you have experienced pain because like I said a lot of you a lot of the Sagittarian experience was about putting your head down and ignoring the fact that you had pain and you had wounds and you had trauma in your past like any of those things and then being somewhat oblivious to the way in which it presents in your present energy you know and you know some of that could be you know, not wanting to commit to things it could be uh, you know slightly reckless approach to life you know any one of, of a number of ways because you were always kind of running away from the essential truth that you were pained and you never wanted to stop and turn around and look at that well what we've got here is is an acknowledgement of that now I think for a lot of you that this is going to have found its expression in the way that you choose to 
open up and talk about this. The fact, in fact, that you are prepared at all to open up and talk about this, because the very first hurdle for you was acknowledging the fact that it existed in the first place. The second was then finding a way to communicate this to the people that you really, really care for. Care for. <coughs> The people that you you know want to build with the people that you are collaborating with at this time whether through you know romantic relationships friends family you know whatever it is and it does feel like a rebirth it, it feels like a rebirth of a different version of Sagittarius and one that might involve not zooming quite so much as you have been doing one that is prepared to spend time in reflection Ooh. A Sagittarian that is prepared to to sit on sit with your feelings and find actually spend the time looking for a way to articulate them. That feels like quite a new thing for you, Sagittarius, but it does feel like it's really uh, bringing its rewards. Like I said, this whole layer of life that's opened up to you now feels like it's very fulfilling in a lot of ways. It's um, in a way that you were oblivious to and perhaps a year or two ago would have resisted quite hard because of what it involved you acknowledging about yourself before you got there. Hmm. So we move into your current energy and we have the sun. Like I said, if you're dealing with a, with a Leo, this might be particularly on point, possibly even a Taurus, but less so the Taurus. It could be an Aries as well. There's a lot of them. Um, <coughs> well, we've got Leo and, and Aries here, which are your sister fire signs, you know, really bringing some of their energy to bear. <coughs> Excuse me. And with Aries, I think you get direction. And with Leo, you get stability. You know, that's that, that fixed energy. It feels like you finding ways to develop self-control that you didn't have before. Certainly... <coughs> A sense of direction and a sense of foundation, which are things that possibly sometimes Sagittarius are missing, right? You've got all of the energy, all of the zoom, but, but you don't really know where you've come from and you don't really know where you're going. You're just kind of zooming around and, and you, you bounce off things as and when, you know. This feels like an alignment going on here and I don't, I know there's a lot going on astrologically at the moment, but I'm not sure how much of it is specifically. Uh, is affecting fire signs, but this does feel like you kind of clunking into place with the fire sign energy in all of its expressions. And this feels like a really powerful position for you to be in, actually, Sagittarius. If you're not dealing with a Leo, then it feels like it's very much a case of feeling the joy. Like it, it's literally just feeling the joy of being alive and at a higher level than you've been able to experience before because like I said, you've, you've opened up, you've accepted in and you've accepted that you've had pains and hurts and wounds and stuff like that. And observation is processing, right? Knowing that there is the first step. I can't remember if I finished this thought process, so bear with me. So you can't heal these things, you can't release these things if you are studiously ignoring them. And it feels like you have stopped studiously ignoring them and you've actually stopped, turned around and looked at you and gone, what are you? Let me have a look at you. Like, how are you expressing yourself in my day-to-day -day reality? How are you stopping me from, from getting some direction, from creating a foundation for myself? You know, and as you have process this and as you, as you have worked through this so it is that you are then able to release these and I do feel a big sense of joy with you we've got the page of swords and the empress clarifying underneath now the page of swords is looking backwards 
he's going forwards, but he's looking backwards. And I think for you, it's this illumination that has come through looking back at yourself. Right, so the retrograde energy very much at play here. This is exactly what the energy is, is designed for. And like I said, it's perhaps an appreciation of just how content and comfortable you are in the present as offset against where you were two years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, whatever. But there's so much insight here that it seems this is really stretching your mind at the moment, you know. And I actually said to my Sagittarian partner this morning, you know, Sagittarius is all about the search for meaning. And there is a sense of you searching for meaning here, you know, kind of mining all of these old situations that you have very determinedly, very resolutely paid no attention to for a very long time, kind of going back and saying, mm, right, okay, right, I can see where I behaved in this way, that way, or, you know, whatever, taking responsibility for it. But then seeing where that came from in you in the first instance and what it was telling you in that present moment for you as you were experiencing these things about how you were feeling there and then you know because i think what's happened sag is that you've got a lot more sensitive to your own inner workings of late than you ever were before because you'd necessarily had to throw up walls and fences and you know all sorts of you know kind of intricate pathways a fucking labyrinth if you will around you To stop not only other people getting in, but kind of getting you, you know, you accidentally ending up in there somewhere. In a place that you weren't ready, weren't prepared to do the work to, to deal with, right? But now you are. So it's kind of, you know, chucking all the, all the stuff out of the way. But <clears throat> there's such joy and abundance in your here and now, even if... Even if things are a little thin on the ground materially, it actually almost doesn't matter. Well, it actually doesn't matter at all because what the Empress teaches us, you know, is uh, fertility and abundance and all those wonderful things, yes. But what abundance actually means, it's not having, you know, a six-figure um, bank balance. It's not about having the shiny fast car. It's not about having the, the massive house. It's not any of those things. Like true abundance is something entirely different. And I see your mind shifting. I, I'm not trying to imply that you've all been shallow and materialistic, though quite the reverse. <coughs> but there's such a sense of gratitude and feeling blessed that is kind of like shrieking off the cards at me right now. That it does suggest that there's been a big shift. I know mean, I started off the reading with saying that it feels like there's been a big shift with you and your values have changed, possibly. Your enjoyment of life has changed, possibly. Perhaps you, the nature of your relationships have changed because, you know, you've, you've looked at these things that you did before and because you understand why you did them that way and because now that's not relevant, you've just stopped doing it, you know? It's actually a really a peaceful array of cards. Sagittarius. And like I said, it doesn't really matter if things aren't going brilliantly well in your day to day, there's something quite, well, you've always been resilient. You are an extremely resilient sign, but there seems to be something that's just really, like I said, just clunked into alignment with everything else. And you're feeling pretty powerful, Sag. Now, when we move into what's coming towards you in June, we have the Ten of Pentacles, we have the Ten of Cups, and we have the Magician. What are you up to? Because this is this is a very strong presentation of energy, right? The Ten of Pentacles is about 
material fulfillment, right? So if you are waiting for money, you could be seeing that coming in in the month of June. If you are looking for a house, you could well be finding that in the month of June, because in addition to, you know, having the means to look after yourself, it is, it is abundance, right? It is, it is commitment. It is heritage and it is legacy. Like sometimes we see this for houses, sometimes we see this for, you know, businesses. But it's a really high level of completion and attainment, ultimately. <clears throat> and then you've got the Ten of Cups clarifying that. So there's the, the emotional fulfillment of not just you, but at least one other, right? This is a collective energy card, just as this is a collective energy card. You know, if this allows you to look after people in the way that you want to, then this is... You know, everybody being happy about the fact that this is occurring. The Magician card here, I said, <clears throat> actually strictly a card of Gemini, but always, always for me with those Sagittarian overtones. Like, the message of the Magician is that you have all of the tools that you need, you know, to do whatever it is that you want to do, to manifest whatever it is that you want to do. And so it could be that what occurs for you in the month of June is that you just realize that that you already have these things. Right? You already have that which you seek, right? You've got all of the tools and actually you've got all of the things. That's possible, but it feels more active than that for me because Although the Empress is numbered three and the Magician is numbered one, they do seem to follow one after the other for me here. So if the Empress is here being an appreciation of the ways in which you are already abundant, the way in which your life is already blessed, then the Magician is like, but here's how I can make it even fucking better, right? This is how I can really whip a rabbit out of my hat. And that is how it feels. Such it is whipping the rabbit out of the hat this month. Whatever it is that you are setting your mind to. <clears throat> Seems like it's coming in for you. And I don't feel like this is just on a whim. I don't think this is something that you've just, just decided in the here and now that you want. This feels like it's something that's been on your mind for a long time. And... June is the point where it coalesces into something that you can see, right? Where your intent matches the energy of the universe and then suddenly here's this thing that you've been after for a long time and it's it's arrived, it's here. Tell me about this. We have the Page of Wands. We have Judgment. That's interesting. <clears throat> The page of wands is about getting excited about, you know, new things. That's that's how I read it very strongly. You know, it's that frisson, kind of little wiggle that you feel when you get really excited about something. Like it's not quite movement yet, but it is on the horizon. It's like, here's the thing, right? It's occurring. With the judgment card, oh, that's, fuck. Oh, I've got the death card appearing again. And the Justice card at the bottom of the deck. Holy shit, Saj. This is a lot of very big energy for, you know, what is effectively a three card reading. Obviously more with clarifiers that are on the table, but we've got the Magician. Then we've got Judgment, we've got Death, we've got Justice. There's perhaps a there's perhaps a transformation in the way that you make decisions about stuff, judgments that you have on situations. But it feels like the consequences of what it is that you've been putting your energy into really seem to be coming up very strongly for you this month. So you might not quite have what it is that you're after in your hands. It may not be fully material yet, but 
it can be perceived, right? It's on the horizon, it's visible with an eyeglass, you can see it coming over the horizon. And the interesting thing is, I think that the benefit from this is twofold because it's not just about you getting what you want from a place of appreciation and gratitude and then, you know, bringing more of that into you. But I think that there's something quite transformative in the way that you see yourself this month too. Like I'm looking at this justice card here and it's, it's interesting how much, <clears throat> how reminiscent she is of, of temperance. You know, which is your card, Sagittarius, and usually depicts an angel who stood there pouring from one cup into another. Now, both of those cards speak about balance. They speak about, you know, balance being restored, justice being done, that sort of thing. But the justice card specifically is about consequences. And they feel very positive. You know, there's no there's no negative overtones here. None whatsoever. Even though you don't quite have your hands on what it is that you are trying to to bring into being for yourself. <clears throat> it feels like the consequences are all profoundly positive. I'm just looking at the we have the death card here, which actually in this deck is a phoenix. Yeah, it's really beautiful. But all over the justice card, we have butterflies. Now we see butterflies on the king of swords, right? Yeah, kind of a, like a lower echo of the justice card there. But the other meaning for butterflies, they are symbols of transformation. And we've got this coming through for you over and over again. It feels very much like the lightness of spirit that is currently occupying you gets its response from the universe let's put it that way in the month of june there's incredible determination here but there is positivity there is light there is a release that has gone on and in that gap which i said you know the gap between your ending and your beginning felt very very small to me In the gap that is being created by the things that you are releasing, the new things just strain straight on in. Mm. It's really astonishing how much June seems to be a pivotal month for every single sign that I've read for. Even the one sign, which was Capricorn, that didn't have a whole load of new things coming in. Like it, it was still speaking of some very deep transformative energy, you know, and actually a gift, an opportunity to fix something that was on its way out of the door, you know? Mm. This is really interesting. So I'm gonna go over to Vimeo now and I'm gonna start pulling this apart because I'd like to see what you've got up your sleeve here, Sadie, because it's, it's fascinating for me to look at from this perspective. So if you're interested in joining me over there, shite. The link is in the description box. I'll try not to set fire to my hair. I do it all the time leaning down here. <clears throat> If not, uh, no shade. I will see you on Monday for the weekly readings. So know that I love you all very, very much. And I will see you soon.